Hello, Raymond Lee, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast. Hi, hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, um, we're really excited, too. I mean, uh, the Quantum Leap fan community has been waiting for this for a long time, and we are thrilled to be welcoming a new Leaper into the fold. Um, tell us how you got started in the business and what led to getting the role of Ben. Yeah, um, well, so my my first professional job was a one-liner on How I Met Your Mother, and that was back in 2011, um, 2010, I think. Uh, and, and before that, I was doing steady commercial gigs, and um, you know, I, I I pride one thing I do pride myself in in my career is that I I have not skipped any steps. I've done non-union commercials. Yeah. I've done college student films. I've done you know, I've done Craigslist movies, you know, I, I, I just I just wanted experience. So I've done uh, everything there is to do. And my progress was very incremental. It was one liner, two liner, three liner, guest star, you know, recurring guest star. And, um, you know, there there wasn't any leaps, so to speak. And um, this is probably the largest step in in my professional career, because uh, I hadn't been given an opportunity to lead a series, let alone a series that is so beloved and coveted. So when I was um, approached with this, um, Martin Jarrow and, and Meg Fister, as you know, uh, or might not know, they, they run Quinn's, Quinn's Production. That's their production company that the show's under. And I had worked with Martin before, and I had done quite a bit of theater, regional theater, some off-Broadway, and uh, Meg Fister was very active in the theater community. She had been casting in Los Angeles theater for a long time, and she had been familiar with my work, and she emailed me out of the blue. I was out in Marshfield, Massachusetts, working on another show, um, and she had emailed me out of the blue and also left me a voicemail um, asking me if I wanted to do this part. <laughs> and completely caught me by surprise because this isn't something that happens. <laughs> I, I, I earn everything. I, 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 you know, it's, it's like I said, incremental. And uh, this just seemed so massive. And I definitely took a pause, talked to my manager. My manager was in disbelief. I'd been with her my entire career. And she was like, well, it's not for the lead. So, you know, just, you know, let's, let's read the script and see how it goes. And I'm like, I think it's for the lead. I, it's here in writing. It's for the lead. And I have her voicemail on my phone. I can, I can, I don't know if I can send this to you, but she's like, okay, well, everyone's sleeping right now. So let's just, um, let's see if we can get a hold of the script and, and let's go from there. So the next morning comes and my manager was like, it's definitely for the lead. Okay, um, let's read the script. Got got a hold of the script and it was fantastic. And um, I remember the original series and, and this felt a lot like it. And as you know, um, the original pilot has now been repurposed to be a later episode. Um, and I read that episode and I was like, wow, this is strangely very close feels very close to who I am and the kind of show that I've always wanted to work on and the kind of character that I've always have seen myself playing. And it felt too good to be true. Um, and then I had a conversation with Martin and he thought it'd be a great fit. And we went on from there. And next thing I knew, I was on a flight to Vancouver uh, shooting the pilot. And it was, it was all just crazy. And, um, yeah, and here we are now, uh, several months later, um, going into episode eight. We just uh, finished two days of episode eight so far, and it feels wild and exciting and uh, haven't lost any excitement. Amazing. That's amazing. You had mentioned that um, when you read the script that you jived with a lot of uh, the character. What, what things about Ben specifically attracted you? You know... Um, just the the overlapping uh just kind of foundationally who they were they had written ben to be um an immigrant uh even though my mom immigrated but it, it was a similar shared experience that i understood uh an only child as well and a son of a single parent um and all of these just lined up and i was like okay well it seems like they have a strangely strong grasp of who this person seems to be and given the times too, I, I thought, um, 
what an opportunity to show that uh, a person that looks like myself is capable of empathy at a time where not so much empathy might have been shown to us, uh, just given the circumstances. And I also thought, wow, this is a, a show with so much heart and humor. And I just, this is all I have ever wanted to do in terms of, you know, I grew up watching Indiana Jones and Back to the Future, and these were always kind of fish out of fish out of water characters, and I was the perpetual fish out of water because I wanted to do so many things with my life, and I loved the idea and the feeling of not knowing how to do something, and then slowly seeing, oh wow, I'm getting better at this, I'm getting better at this, and now I'm actually good at it. It's like, okay, now what else can I pick up? And you know, um, I, I, that might have I might have gone on a tangent there, but um, I just felt like this fish out of water story very related very much to who I was and and my story. And, you know, sometimes just the words fit, you know, and the person fits and you don't have to do so much work to, to, to get there. And yeah, in hindsight, I can see why Meg and Martin were, were so confident that I was the person I, I sure wasn't. <laughs> they, they, they were. <laughs> um, but yeah. I, I'm interested. You, you mentioned a bit about reading the original script and um, the, the, the ties you felt to it. I know at the point that they wrote the script, there were talks about casting an Asian American or Middle Eastern or North African. It was It was very broad. Have they mm. lent more into your heritage now you've been cast? Is that something that you're, you're starting to feel is coming out? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and what I love about it is that that's not the end all be all. It just happens to be a, a, an aspect of the character. And, um, you know, that, that shouldn't be the, the overruling um, characteristic of the reasons why he chooses to be the person that he is. It just happens to be that. Um, and so I, I think the thing that they wanted out of this character um, was someone who wasn't naturally an American and, and they wanted an immigrant story. Um, and uh, those those all applied, I suppose. Um, so far, what we've seen of the show, the, the first two episodes that we've seen have been very heavily action oriented. Um, the original series was a lot about... Um, walking a mile in someone else's shoes and are we are we going to get to see a little bit more of that as the show progresses either with relation to uh, Ben's own journey or or otherwise yeah um yeah I, I think what they've chosen to do with this uh show is uh it's definitely an accelerated show and and there's going to be much more elements of of action just because that's just they want that's what they want the show to be um and they're also seem to be leaning into my strengths as uh an actor and what i'm capable of doing and i haven't done so much action in the past but um they know that i'm capable of doing it and and uh it's it's nice to to have that um uh them looking out for my strengths um yeah i mean i would love and and there has been yes there has been much more development on the backstory of who ben is and 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 i think that that's that's just the way that they're choosing to um sort of parse out the information kind of just putting it together episode by episode because it has to be serialized um and and that's the way we can really draw audiences and and, and i love what they've chosen to do with now establishing the relationship that that Ben and Addison had previously had. So now that we can work back to that instead of the original, um, original this, uh, where we just kind of threw the audience into a leap right away. And there was a lot to catch up on, not only uh, the exposition of what had happened before, but the exposition of what is happening currently in San Francisco Mm -hmm. in an earthquake and you're a time traveler and you're here to to save this and you have to do that and here's Ziggy. It was a lot, um, but when you establish first that, okay, these are two people that are in love. This is a a family that they had back at headquarters. And then now uh, Ben has chosen to do this, and now we have to work back to that. And I think that's just uh, a better way to set it up, easier for the audience to sort of digest because we're we're asking a lot (laughs) of the audience. (laughs) It's, 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 uh, you know, the mythology is like, bam! (laughs) Yeah. yeah, um, but yeah, I, we are going to see 
much more of Ben's backstory as, as, as we um, just upbringing as we go along. Well, it's, it's interesting um, that you're talking about like learning to play to the strengths that you have and, you know, the, them discovering what you're capable of. And I know that TV shows, especially in their first season, are always finding their footing. Um, was there anything in the new Quantum Leap uh, that has evolved, like aspects of Ben's character or the story that have surprised you as you've gone on the journey? Um. You know, I'm surprised with every script. Um, we have such a strong writing staff and, uh, you know, we, we always hear rumblings of what is coming before it comes, right? So we're wor working on episode three and we're like, did you hear what episode eight might be about? It's like, oh my gosh. So we're always in anticipation of where we're going to be and what time. And, and, you know, I've asked them to withhold certain important key uh, elements of the story from me because I like being surprised and I, I like building my character based on what I have in front of me. Um, again, I've never been in this position, so it's not something I have uh, anything to base it on, but I'm finding that it's more exciting for me to take this journey as it comes. So um, I am, once the new scripts come in, I'm like ravenously, oh, wow, this is crazy. Um, but yeah, it's very fun to hear that like, oh yeah, t episode 10, it's going to be about this. No way. Who's writing it? Wow. Who we were thinking of getting as a director? That's crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I don't even remember what your question was, but <laughs> yeah. uh, very excited. <laughs> I got excited. Well, you're um, taking the journey like Ben, you know, Ben doesn't know anything going into it. Exactly. So, um, yeah. 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 So uh, unlike us, we're just like looking for all of the information. <laughs> like what's going on over here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, 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 you know, it, it, I, I find that it just also just benefits me to focus on the show uh, and, and to be present with what's happening because really all we can control is what is happening on the days. And we want to make sure we, we get the scene, we understand the story and then we get the shot and then we move on and we complete that episode and then we go to the next one. Um, but yeah, I, I, I uh, as far as leaning into my strengths go, um, you know, I've had conversations with Martin and the other writers and they've asked me, um, what can you do? And being an only child, I can, I know how to do, I am fairly mediocre to good at a lot of things. I am not great <laughs> at anything. Um, so it's great for the purposes of the show because like, have you boxed? Yes, I have actually, because I was just a bored only child, and I just did a lot of boxing. And can you? Um, I don't. I don't. Can you karaoke? Yes, I sing by myself all the time. And it, yeah, it's just, just I have a lot of random skills, and uh, this just seems to be the perfect show to use them all, all, all on. <laughs> Do you have a favorite leap so far? I mean, we've seen you so far as an undercover cop and as a boxer and mm -hmm. as an astronaut. And I think um, you're going to be a female for the first time in the mm -hmm. next episode. And uh, also the cowboy episode and the earthquake episode. I mean, that's that's yeah. a lot. Is there anything standing out um, specifically as a favorite I, so far? Oh, my God. They're all my favorite. I, I swear <laughs> I've already checked off half of all of the, the items on the actor's bucket list already. I can't even imagine what's ahead. Um, but I, I love the boxing episode and I love that it's coming as it's so close uh, for, for, for viewing. Um, you know, I, I watched like Rocky growing up and, you know, anytime there's any movie that has to do with fighting at the core of it, it's just like, you understand there's so much that you could wrap in a fighter's story. Um, and it's so, there is always a victor and there's always a loser. And you have to deal with the outcomes of that and everything leading up to it. There's so much pressure. And even though you've never fought professionally yourself, you understand that feeling. And so I've always wanted to be in a boxing movie or anything uh, boxing storytelling related. And so when the script landed, it was it was incredible. Um, and I also feel like this is the show. This is the episode that we kind of start to find our footing and we 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 somewhat find our, our voice and uh it's it's a i think we've done a really incredible job establishing the world and establishing the characters and now i think we're given license to really start flying um and this episode um the, our guest cast is phenomenal uh, i'm just very excited for y'all to watch and uh for me personally that was just 
it's it was the most fun because I got to train. I got I got to actually box, and I and I got to work with professional fighters, and I and I, and I got to be in a ring, you know. And the the ref is an actual professional boxing ref who was there. And so for me, I'm like, I can't believe this is real life. If, if my ten year old self could see me now, <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that, it's, so far that's been my favorite league. Not my favorite episode of, they're all my favorites, but that's been my favorite personal league just for the boxing. And yeah. Has, has there been a lot of, um, we, we know that uh, there was a NASA consultant on set for episode two. You've just mentioned, I, I we had no idea. I don't think that there was uh, um, so much support for episode three. Have you had specialists surrounding you the whole way? Yeah, to some capacity, yeah. Um, the female bounty hunter episode, uh, uh, no, <laughs> because I don't know how, how professional you female it. bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, uh, it would have been very cool. Honestly, I would have just uh, on all my lunch breaks, I would have been like, "So, what's it like? What's like?" Um, but yeah, I, to some capacity, there's always been professionals uh, t- teaching us to do the professional thing. Uh, for the Western, there was some, most of our cast, uh, actually one actor in particular, and I, I'm, 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 I'm not, I don't, I can't remember his name right now. I think he's been in like 40 Westerns. And so I was just watching him be, and I was like, that's how you do a Western. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, our, again, our writers are so immensely smart that they know so much as well. So um, that's why they're given the episodes that they're given to write uh, also. But yeah. It's so exciting. I'm excited for Cowboys. I'm excited yeah. for Halloween. I'm just, it's a great show because you're never bored. You just jump from thing to Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, does, I want to ask one of the skills that you just mentioned, and you, you threw it in there and went straight on, but I'm going to make you go back to it. Um, we, we know you like to sing, and we've spoken to other guest stars who've, who've talked about your singing. Um, the reason has been an earworm all week amongst Quantum Leap oh, yeah. fandom. Are we, we going to hear Ben singing? Are we, we going to hear more of that? Whether it's the reason or something else? I've got it stuck in my head I'm right sure. now. This is entirely awful. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That experience. Let me tell you, uh, I have never been more mortified until uh, 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 than, than the moment after the rehearsal when I was directing the roots how to play Hoobastank. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> one of the greatest hip hop bands ever and possibly one of the greatest drummers ever how to play these just major chords on okay and this is how i want it okay and i'm gonna come in here <laughs> if i can just get a little guitar there just to lead me in and then the full yes yes and then quest love is just there mm-hmm, yeah, you know, <laughs> with our eyes closed. and i went back to the dressing room and i was so mortified that i had done that but they needed to know what I wanted to do. So, um, but anyways, yeah, I, I hope there can be uh, karaoke. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Cause I'm not a great singer, but I love singing and it is definitely the way if there's just silence, I'm usually humming a tune or, or we're singing a song like Koopa Stank is the reason. Um, but yeah, yeah. I hope there can be a, a karaoke episode. That'd be terrific because um, one of the signatures of the original series was that Scott was basically like a jack of all trades. So there were so many episodes where he was dancing. You had your tango in in the uh, premiere episode, the pilot, um, mm-hmm. singing a lot. So um, there's a lot of connective tissue there that's kind of part of the legacy of the show. But I was wondering, I know that you've been asked this question a million times and um, most leapers already know the answer. I know that you didn't see the show when it was first on, you were introduced to it in syndication, right? Right. Right. So, I mean, since getting yourself familiar with the original um, and getting familiar with Scott and his performance, how does that legacy and Scott's performance as Sam influence your approach to Ben? That's a great question. Um, And it's something that I've thought about a lot. And, you know, when I first got the part, I immediately started binging all day. And I was, and I found myself um, trying to um, emulate Scott's performance. And it wasn't a good fit for the type of show we had. Um, because times, the style of acting has changed, the pace of acting has changed, um, the attention span of viewers have changed, 
and it's it, it's we don't have um, the, we don't have the luxury of really massaging moments because I, I every episode was like a feature film, um, and we're trying to do something similar, but we also have so much more story to jam pack. Um, and so, yeah, I found that very early on that it, it wasn't going to do me any good to, to recreate his performance because also how do you recreate something so perfect? And so for me, I had to find my own way into it. So watching more episodes for reference wasn't doing me any good. And instead, I'm just watching it as a viewer. Um, and it's also impossible to remember what I saw in sixth grade uh, to try to recreate those memories and how that would correlate with what I'm doing. But yeah, to answer your question, it, it, it was something that I had put thought into, um, but I, at some point I, I had to let go of it so I can follow my own path with this new show and just had to lean in more to who, who I was. I think they've done a good job so far of um, giving you space to sort of react to the leaps. But as you said, it's a much different show. It's a lot more fast paced. And mm -hmm. we've been basically doing a lot of 50 50. We have the leap plot. We have the project plot and we have mm -hmm. a lot of intercutting. I think the real connected tissue there is is Caitlin as as Addison. As the shows go on, you say you kind of find your footing in the boxing episode. Do we just get to breathe? A little bit more with Ben and see him more in these situations kind of I know it will never be the same pacing as the original because as you said times have moved on but it'd be right. nice to see you know a, a bit more immersive in in the leaps yeah yeah and 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 I think we do um, I think because in the first two episodes there's so much to establish not only headquarters but all the players in the headquarters and all the nuanced relationships inside there and and now we find that there is a a nefarious character in, in all of this and so there's a lot to jam in and essentially it's the same amount of time that the original had to so it's mm. it's it's aggressively fast that it's been um but yeah as the episodes progress um there, there is a little bit of slowing down and breathing. I personally would love more of that as well. But again, we, we have an ensemble cast. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it is just a different show. And, and I think it's great in terms of expanding, expanding the universe that is Quantum Leap. Um, but yeah, I, and yeah, like you were mentioning, the, the, the connective tissue there is Caitlin. And, um, you know, she's, she's working hard, just like on a physical level, because she's working in the headquarters she's working with with me on the leaps and and um she's required to deliver a lot of story um and uh yeah i i am lucky to have someone so capable like caitlin by my side not only as ben but as raymond uh ray i called myself raymond after asking you to call me Ray. <laughs> <laughs> um uh because you know she really is who who that character is she is in, insanely smart incredibly capable and yeah she should have been the leaper but i don't yeah. know yeah that was an interesting wrinkle. I kicked myself after we spoke to Caitlin because um, it just never even occurred to me to ask her how she felt about that aspect of the character. So, Caitlin, if you're listening, we'll have you back, and I'm going to ask you that question specifically. <laughs> but, you know, I was just talking about um, sort of harkening back to the pacing of the original series, but... At heart, I'm like a lore geek and I love like all the project stuff and I love that we're spending so much time back at the project and all the, we were talking about connective tissue, all of the connective the tissue. Now's the time to quiz them though. Now's the yeah, time to quiz that's it. So, so in episode three, <laughs> season one, also a boxing episode. <laughs> but, you know, we, we've... It's okay, we'll go easy on you. Um, We've spoken to Susan Deal, who reprised her role as Beth Calavici, and uh, we found out now that Ben is working with Janice Calavici, and Magic himself was once a leapy, which I know they're going to be exploring in future episodes. So, I mean, all of this ties to the original series in so many different ways. Can we as leapers who love all of this stuff expect more callbacks to the original project as time goes on? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's incredible is that every writer in, the, in that writer's room were immense fans of the original. So 
as much as we're progressing and and expanding the universe, we're we're still definitely uh, trying our best to honor the original and. We personally love it. The writers love it. Um, as many tie-ins and Easter eggs as we can possibly manage to fit in there, it'll be in there. Um, one thing that's really cool, I think uh, y'all are going to love, is um, there's going to be three different handlings in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> we were just waiting <laughs> waiting for the old, the old school handling to be busted out at some point. It's got to be. Yeah. Susan kind of alluded to that. Um, she didn't say it outright, so um, no NDAs were broken, Susan. Don't worry. Um, and Caitlin, <laughs> Caitlin had mentioned that you guys had to work around the fact that you shot with a different hand link in the original pilot, so there is going to be a nod to that. So I'm thinking we can maybe even pinpoint the episode then. Um, say no more. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, I don't even know. I, I might be in so much trouble for saying that. But... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was something I noticed uh, that because it, it's not on the page, uh, but it, it's in the scene. And I'm like, uh, is anyone else seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. Sorry if I gave away something I shouldn't have, but I thought that was really cool. So, Oh, we're just super excited. We're excited about any tidbits. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, we're just, you know, now that we know that we're going to be seeing some old school stuff, we just can't wait for Deborah to reprise her role as Ziggy uh, once Ziggy wakes up. Oh, it's going to be so exciting. I got chills. Uh, I didn't know in the pilot episode that Deborah was going to do the voiceover on top. Um, and I, apparently it was a really last minute addition. Um, oh. But, you know, we fired it up. And my entire body just like all the hairs on the back of my neck rose up because I'm like, oh my god, it's like <laughs> this is so perfect. What a beautiful uh, continuation, and uh, what a what a great through line to have. And you know, Deborah's been so present with us. Uh, she's there almost every day on set, even if she can only pop in for five to ten minutes and and spread her love. But she really is. Uh, the, with her around, I can feel the energy that, that was there uh, the first time around. And, and, with, and, and it allows us to really work at our top potential to know that we have her blessings as we, as we forge forward. Um, so yeah, Deborah, if you're listening, I love you. Thank you so much uh, for, for being there for us and, and, and for sharing your love and for giving us your blessings. Um, yeah, I got chills when I, when I first heard that her voiceover I was like, oh, yeah. it was great did you uh did you watch the premiere with your family yeah um had a little uh it was it was scary because we um we were shooting that day and it was on at 10 as you know and and uh we wrapped at nine and i i had invited all my friends over to my my in-laws house and um uh, and my mom was there, they were all waiting and we were just like, I, I got home, I got changed real fast and I just went straight there and, and all my close six, six closest friends with all their significant others and uh, my, my kids were asleep already. But um, yeah, my mom was there um, and you know, my wife was there and, and, and it, was, it was just, it was great. It was, it, was, it was a beautiful celebration of not only, uh, you know, myself and my journey in this path as an actor, but a celebration of a beautiful show that that means so much. Um, that 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 stands for all the right things, especially at a time where shows like and nothing, no knock on Dahmer or anything like that, but it, it is a, a strange celebration of something that perhaps shouldn't be celebrated. Um, but and it but it makes for great television, makes for a great. Um, drama and all that but you know for me personally I, I i love stories like this where um folks can gather around the tv of all ages and can experience something together and, and to me that's very special especially now being a father of two kids and and I'm always looking for uh ways to spend time with them together and, and watch something with them together um yeah it was a it was a it was a great 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 night i might just uh just switching track very briefly and this is something quite specific but i'm just really interested um we we saw early on when we were desperate for for footage and for material one of the first things that we saw <laughs> of, of ben was what we gather as specially filmed trailers there was the, the joe montana leap the heavy metal chick the desert storm 
Uh, was that how early on in production for that was you? Were you still getting a feel for Ben when you were suddenly out there promoting it, or was it a bit, yeah. a bit further down the line? No, it was very early on. Um, yeah, it, it, it was it was a strange day because we shot all of those in one day. Uh, and it, it really felt like a, 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 an entire week's worth of work in one day. Um, but it, it was cool because it was just the leaps, right? And, and I, when I saw it all smashed in with the trailer, I was like, wow, our show seems like, it, like so much bigger than it was at the time. Um, and I was actually kind of concerned about that because I, I, I talked to Martin. I was like, are we at all concerned that our viewers are never going to, never going to see me as Joe Montana? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, it'll be great. It's just more eyes to the show. <laughs> and uh, Never say never. Uh, just, just do the Joe Montana leap next year. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, the female rocker for sure. That one was, uh, I was like, this, shit, this could be an episode um, and a very manageable one and something I would love to do. Um, but yeah, it, it was very early on. Uh, I, yeah, I was still getting a grasp of, of who Ben was. And, and, and I guess in hindsight, if I were to think about it, 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 we treated it as if it was the first leap each time. Um, so very surprising. It's, it's a lot less, um, like, okay, what is my next leap? It is more so like, where the heck am I? Who am I? Um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, speaking to that point and uh, in the weeds, but it seemed like Ben was going to have the catchphrase, oh, shit. Um, have we backed away from that? Is that, is that still a possibility? What's going on with the oh, shit? <laughs> I don't know. The, the, um, the, the origin story with the oh, shit is very unclear uh, because it's not it, – it's, it's on the – it's written on the page in the original. Um, and when I remember the day we shot it in Vancouver, I was strapped onto the, the, uh, the, the, the space shuttle about to take off. And, and uh, we tried all different versions. We definitely tried Oh Boy several times. And then, and, then, and then we went on to the Oh Shits. And then we went on to the Oh Sh. <laughs> so we can't really say the shit. We just can't. Um, so <laughs> maybe it's yeah. just a little <laughs> Uh, and perhaps maybe for peacock audiences, maybe shit could live in there. So uh, maybe there would be a different edit for the peacocks. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, oh, shit seems really appropriate <laughs> like, given where he's at. It's crazy that he's not saying more. <laughs> I had to get to the bottom of that. That's lingering mystery. Yeah, yeah right. It's just be a new swear every time. Just cut off. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Great, mother. <laughs> so much more plausible than oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, oh no, boy doesn't cut it every time. Sometimes you're yeah. in a situation it's not no boy moment. <laughs> yeah, and I know we're joking about that, but oh boy was scott's signature in the series and it was the hallmark of the series um in yeah. many ways when you guys were doing the old boys what what made you decide to move on from that uh, mostly because i was directed to say stop uh and then move on to the oh shits um but okay. uh you know it, it did feel like um you know in the same vein of of wanting to separate myself from from what came previously and finding my own voice and my my own way into the story and the character it also just um it was incredibly it was kind of an honor to say it first of all uh and secondly i knew that it wasn't it wasn't mine you know and so you know collectively it, it, it wasn't something that i said like i want my own catchphrase it was more of just like collectively like we, it's a new show um we should have new things to say <laughs> okay that's fair enough yeah and the ocean's still evocative so <laughs> yeah yeah it gets the point across <laughs> well i mean you know you've been generous with your time and you know in the vein of of sort of that new stuff to come uh, are there any aspects of the story in general or the series in general that um you'd like to discuss that we haven't touched upon or any tidbits that you can give us besides the bombshell announcement of three handlings in one episode <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm particularly uh, right now uh, really interested in in just uh, Ben's um, just his endurance, his where he finds himself mentally uh, after having done five, six, seven leaps, and now fully knowing that he might not be returning home anytime soon. And learning to grasp with that reality, finding out more and more about who Addison is to him. You know, here's a guy who doesn't even know what he looks like, let alone who he loves. And so that's it's been really fun for me to try layering in um, all of that and see the toll that each of these leaps have taken on him. And it's a great um, it's a great challenge as an actor. It's it's a it's a great storytelling challenge, and um, you know how these leaps, if they do, end up affecting him. And is he going to compromise any of his core values because he is compromised? You know, and and these are all things I think as a human being, we try to do our best, but and at times we just can't. We just can't. And so it's it's been very interesting for me to see and chart what the writers have been writing, the discussions that we've been having. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I have a little workbook of like, wow, you know, this has happened in this leaf. That must have taken something from his soul. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. this had happened in this leaf. You know, and, and um, yeah, that's been particularly interesting for me to chart. Um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The Halloween episode is going to be so fun. <laughs> I love Halloween. I love Halloween. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We just wrapped that, and uh, and and we're all just so giddy because it's like, oh my gosh! Um, because I think that Monday also falls on Halloween too. Um, mm. If I, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, so it does. Fun. Yeah, I, I read an interview mm. with Martin Garrow uh, where he said it was some sort of take on The Exorcists. I'm like, what in the world could be going on? <laughs> oh, um, ever, I was legitimately frightened uh, reading the episode, but it's also so it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, it is. It is. It, it's an homage to The Exorcist. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm, I'm excited for everything that's to come. Definitely. So are we. I know how much the original, and here's the thing too. Um, when I speak with fans of the original, the energy that I get from them is not like this ravenous, like, like, oh my God, it's coming back. It's like, oh, it's, it's, what do you get? it's, it's more of just a very, you know, they, they had an experience with the show that really touched them. It was something that they either watched, um, with I, I had so much of these stories too. It was like it's a show that I watched with my dad. It's a show that that we had watched as a family, and it's they're very thoughtful, uh, very emotionally in touch, very empathetic beings who are extremely smart. Um, and it's I've been met with um, so much warmth that it has allowed me to do my job better. And uh, you know, I, of course, there's going to be a negative with any 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 project that's previously loved uh there's going to be people who who hold it close to them but you know the 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 good far outweighs the bad and i i just need to thank the the original fan base and i i need to thank you for having me on and for for uh for embracing me and and uh you know for 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 willing to take this journey with me and through my eyes no, yeah. So thank you so much for having me on and, and, and thank you for for um, just bringing me in and, 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 and allowing for all this to, to happen with with your with your blessings. So thank you. Yeah, we're excited to take the journey with you. We're excited to keep track of Ben's evolution and uh, we look forward to many episodes to come and many seasons of sharing it with you. Thank you, Ray, so much for being on the Quantum Leap podcast with us.